Campbell Midland has played most of this baseball postseason with its back against the wall. The Knights dropped game one of the sectional tournament, then proceeded to win four consecutive elimination games, including an epic 13-inning contest against Spring Valley in the championship game. Carrying that momentum into the regionals, Cabell Midland swept number one ranked and defending champ Hurricane to get back to the state tournament for the first time in 10 seasons. At St. Albans, recent success has led to heightened expectations each and every year. The Red Dragons have won state championships 2019-2017 and that championship pedigree has carried over to this year. St. Albans has a solid veteran starting pitcher in Garrett Comer, thus a chance to beat anyone in the field. Cabell Midland has knocked off number two Spring Valley in the sectionals and defending champ Hurricane in the regionals, but when it matters most, St. Albans has come up big this year, having won three elimination games in the sectional and two more after falling behind Greenbrier is in the regional. One of these teams will have a chance to add to the collection of state championships by moving on to the finals. It's Cabell Midland against St. Albans, an all MSAC affair and a regular season rematch as the 2023 state championships continue. And good morning from the capital city of Charleston. It is day two of the 2023 state championship tournament. We've got the class AAA semifinal doubleheader getting set to get underway here in about 15 minutes. Number one seed Cabell Midland against the number four seed St. Albans. I'm Kyle Wiggs. Fred Persinger is alongside. And Fred, these are conference rivals, teams that have played. They know each other very well. They do indeed. And I think today's game, we're going to find out much how we found out last night, Kyle. Simply enough, it's all about pitching. We found that out last night in an extra innings game that went 11 innings. If the pitchers on the mound can do what they're supposed to do, I think that will silence the big bats, and both teams have some big bats. Coming up on the pregame, we'll learn a little bit more about these two communities, and we'll hear from both head coaches. Let's start those conversations now. Earlier today, Fred had a chance to visit with Cabell Midland veteran head coach Tracy Brumfield. Before we start the game today here at Gomart Ballpark in Charleston, let's talk about your ball club. You have played a number of games already. Uh, yeah, we're 28 and 10 right now, 38 games into the season. Uh, that's the most games we've played probably in the last 10 years. When you look at your ball club, talk about your strengths and what might be perceived as weaknesses. Uh, I think our strength is uh, our pitching and our defense. Uh, we knew that going into the season that that would be our strength. But as the years went on, our hitting has gotten better too. I would think with just looking at what your section and region look like, you've got to be tournament tested and tournament ready. Uh, I think we are. Our kids think, you know, we tell our kids that, um, you know, the themes that we play during regular seasons will prepare us for tournament time. And we go over that with them over and over through the year. So I do think that the schedule we've played this year has helped us, you know, battle tested in the tournament. Give me your thoughts on a familiar team. You played them once in the regular season. That was like six weeks or so ago. Doesn't really count as far as, but you, you handled St. Albans rather easily. Give me your thoughts on Rick Whitman's ball club. I think they have a, a tremendous ball club. You know, um, it was, like you said, six weeks ago. You can't go by that. we got to come out and play it, you know, uh, because they got a great team. And they're not, you know, they're here for a reason. And so we got to be ready to come out and play our best ball. Who do you give the ball to today? Uh, Kenyon Collins, a junior this year from Ono, West Virginia. What's he throw? He throws fastball and slider. And as far as hitting through the lineup, pretty solid? Yeah, we're pretty solid up and down through the lineup, uh, especially our one through six. And the last couple of weeks, our uh, seven through nine have come up, uh, come up big in situations. In your opinion, give me one key to a win for the Knights today. Uh, we got to outscore the opponent. <laughs> I love a coach that just cuts it down. Coach, good luck to you, buddy. All right, thank you. Thanks for having me.
Cabell Midland High School is in the community of Ona, West Virginia, in Cabell County, providing educational opportunities to students in the eastern half of that county. The school's sprawling campus lies between U.S. Route 60 and Interstate 64. It is one of West Virginia's largest high schools, often the largest, depending on enrollment numbers. Ona lies between the towns of Milton and Barbersville, the two schools consolidated to make Cabell Midland. In addition to the school, Ona is also home of the Ona Speedway and the Ona Air Park, featuring a 300-foot runway for small aircraft. From Ona come the Cabell Midland Knights to Go Mart Ballpark. Situated at the confluence of the Coal River and Kanawha River in Kanawha County is the city of St. Albans. It was originally called Coles Mouth in reference to the river when the first settlers arrived. But railroad giant Collis B. Huntington brought the railroad through St. Albans in the early 1870s. He had a lot of political clout and was able to successfully get the name changed to St. Albans, supposedly as a favor to his chief attorney, H.C. Parson, named after his hometown of St. Albans, Vermont. Today, a bridge over the Kanawha River links St. Albans to Nitro, West Virginia. Notable alumni include Olympic gold medalist Randy Barnes. From St. Albans come the Red Dragons to Go Mart Ballpark. Metro News, voice of West Virginia. Player introductions being made here at Gomart Ballpark, and we're less than 10 minutes away from the first pitch of Class AAA semifinal round game number one, Cabell Midland against St. Albans. Earlier this morning, Fred Persinger had a chance to visit with the veteran head coach of St. Albans, Rick Whitman. Let's first of all talk about this season. You were quoted earlier that it has been a roller coaster ride. Give me your thoughts on that. Yeah, you know, we played 40 games uh, counting our postseasons. That's the most we ever played since I've been a coach in 25 years. So uh, it was a grind. Went through some stretches where uh, we played more games than we had pitching and uh, took, took some lumps, but I think in the end it was good for us. Yeah, I think uh, if you can get against some good competition and you learn something from it, then you move on and you're a little better team. Yeah, you know, our seniors uh, throughout the year kind of kept everybody together and uh, – uh, even in the low moments, uh, the seniors stepped up and uh, it's kind of carried over to the postseason. Talk about baseball around the state, particularly Class AAA. Not a single team that was here last year in AAA is back. Uh, I think that says something about the, the state of the game overall. Yeah, you know, the game of baseball in West Virginia just, just keeps getting better and better. I mean, from facilities to coaching to the – you know, player development. I mean, it, you know, kids are playing baseball now eight, nine months a year here in West Virginia. And, uh, you know, it's just improved the play, improved uh, the parity. Um, you know, it, it's wide open this year. I mean, obviously the four teams that are here are all good teams. But, uh, you know, it's who gets hot at the right time. Let's talk about your ball club. Uh, giving the ball to who today? Uh, Garrett Comer. He's our uh, he's a senior, one of our four seniors. Uh, he's 8-1. and one. He's been a guy that we've uh, kind of leaned on, uh, really played well in the postseason, pitched well. So, um, you know, we're uh, happy with uh, giving him the ball. Offensive attack, who are some of your stronger players? Uh, well, Aiden Youngblood's been uh, steady at the leadoff spot for us. And then Riker Parker hits third. He, he's a guy that can drive the ball in the gaps. And, uh, you know, we just, need to let, we just need to cut our strikeouts down, put the ball in play, put pressure on them. Um, you know, we run the bases pretty well as far as our team speed. 
um, you know, make the routine play and throw strikes. You met him once in the regular season. That was six weeks ago. Doesn't really have anything to do with today's game. But give me your thoughts on Cabell Midland. Uh, they're, they're solid. I mean, they're just, you know, Tracy does a good job with them. I mean, they've got like 2,000 students in their school. So there's a bunch of bunch of talent down there in, in all sports. But, uh, you know, we know what we've got in front of us today. And um, we're excited about the challenge. Rick, best of luck, buddy. Hey, right, thank you. Here at Thornhill, our goal is to provide you with the best automotive experience. Here at Thornhill, our goal is to provide you with the best automotive experience. From our state-of-the-art facilities, amenities, and certified staff, we call family. You'll be offered the best experience you deserve. We take pride in our focus for customer care, bringing the best quality and support for all of our customers' needs. What are you waiting for? It's your time to get behind the wheel with Thornhill. Get started now at thornhillautomotive.com. Just tag it at Thornhill, where it's all here for you. US 119 Chapmanville and Logan, WV to Belfry, Kentucky. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Moments away from the first pitch, Class AAA semifinal round game number one. Number one ranked, Cabell Midland against fourth seed St. Albans a little bit later on today. Around 12.30 perhaps, but you never know. <laughs> University against Hedgesville. What are you Fred, saying? Uh, well, I'm saying we had a three-hour, 15-minute, 11-inning game last night. Well, we did indeed, but if you like high school baseball, if you like baseball, Man, that was the game to watch, no doubt about that. You know, look, Cabell Midland coming in. They're the number one seed with various teams being knocked off in the regionals or the sectionals. They had a midway through the season, they were one and six, but they've turned that around, and they're a pretty hot ball club coming in to this state tournament. St. Albans, the starting lineup for St. Albans. Aiden Youngblood leads off. He's the shortstop. Garrett Comer, the pitcher, will bat second. Riker Parker plays third base and hits third. Tristan Harless, the catcher, hits fourth. Gavin Comer, that would be Garrett's little brother. He's at second base and batting fifth. Michael Heinemann plays right field and hits sixth. Bryce Eggleton, the first baseman, bats seventh. Carson Womack in left field hits eighth. And the DH is Will Curry batting ninth. And again, the top seed Cabell Midland Knights warming up. In case you missed last night's action, Fred was referring to it we have the single a semifinals and top seed tyler knights defeated petersburg seven to five and that long game the 11 inning game wahama beat charleston catholic four to one so st albans up at the plate cabell midland defensively nida pettit 
Eastone left to right in the outfield. Williams at third, McSweeney at short. Folks at second, Jared Nethercut at first. You've got a battery of Kenyon Collins and the catcher, Samuel. Young Bud at the plate, first pitch right on time. 10 o'clock on the dot, and it is outside for ball one. Kudos to Pete Kelly for getting that underway at the time it's supposed to start. Did it yesterday, too, right at 4.30. This pitch swung on and hit into left. It gets past the left fielder, Nida. Backing up the play is Pettit. But Youngblood is around second. He's flying for third, and he'll dive in. That's how this game starts. And Youngblood good. pumped up. After hitting that ball past the left fielder, he ends up at third base. And Coach Rick Whitman said Aiden Youngblood is the key to this attack. He starts things well, off, and when you can start with a, a triple, that's not bad. But Nida took a couple of steps in, and that was his undoing. And again, Pettit, the center fielder, got over to cut the ball off, but not before Aiden Youngblood dives into third safely. Here's Comer. He can help himself. He swings, hits the ball down the right field line. Hits fair. That'll go for extra bases as well. Youngblood scores. Comer digging for second. He stands up with a double. Back to back. Extra base hits right off the bat for St. Albans against Kenyon Collins. It is 1 0 Red Dragons. That ball taken to right field, and it fell in just inside the line. And just like that, St. Albans has the early lead. Now that little inside-out swing by Garrett Comer got the run to score. So all of a sudden, we are looking at one nothing, and we've had two batters come to the plate. And now here's the kid that can take it out, Riker Parker. Parker from the right side. Curveball hangs high, ball one. Been nursing a shoulder injury late in the season. Missed three games. Thought he was going to miss the whole season, but he came back strong and working hard. And he's not quite 100%, but he's pretty good. He swings and hits one sharply foul, third base side. Parker, as you mentioned, Fred has the power. Hit seven home runs as a freshman. And this year he has five. And the outfield is very, very deep. Cabell Midland knows all about this guy. Runner at second, nobody out. Second baseman Folks keeping Garrett Comer close, the pitch. And it's right in there for a strike. Randy Edge behind the plate. You've got Phil Porter at first, Rex Foster at second base, Michael Stevens at third. Collins set from the belt. He delivers and swinging another foul. That one over near the dugout once again. Parker, a big kid, he really stays on top of that ball. Second baseman Folks standing near the bag as the pitch comes in. It's behind him, behind his head, off the bricks. But getting to third is Comer. That ball ricocheted off the bricks right back to the catcher, Samuel, but no chance to throw out Comer. So the wild pitch puts Comer at third. He's there with nobody out. Collins trying to record the first out of this inning. Cabell Midland not bringing the infield in with the runner at third, and this pitch is fouled out of play. So they'll, uh, they're more concerned about getting outs at this point. Boy, Rick Whitman the could, first not, inning. Could, could not ask for a better yeah. start. Triple off the bat of Youngblood. Double off the bat of Comer. And it's 1-0. Comer at third. Nobody out. Here's the pitch to the plate. And it's popped out a foul again. We've got a battle here between Collins and this big young slugger, the sophomore Riker Parker of St. Albans. Kenyon Collins will be a college pitcher. He's headed to Dayton. Here's the pitch off the end of the bat foul. Some kind of battle right now. That's already pitch number 11, number 12, brother for Kenyon Collins, and he's only faced three hitters. Again, that outfield deep. The center fielder Pettit straight away, and the infield back all the way around. This pitch swung on and missed. So there's the strikeout for Collins. That's number 62 on the season. 
for the right-hander. He's in his 42nd inning of work. First out in this top half of the first inning. Collins is ready to go. He just wants the batter to get in there. He's already set. Put on the rubber, ready to do it. Here is Harless batting from the left side. And the pitch off the glove of the catcher. It was outside for ball one. Samuel had it go off the top of his glove, but it landed just behind him, so he was able to pick it up. And Comer has to stay put. Two teams met April 23rd in Ona. Cabell Midland won that one 11 to 1. Well, St. Albans has already matched that run total. Three batters into the game. It's a 1 0 Red Dragons lead. Ball two to the plate. Harless trying to make contact. Pull the ball, get that runner home. And here's a foul left side out of play. Again, the infield is back, so they'll give up the run. He just needs to hit it on the ground to the right side of the infield. One out in the inning. Collins set once again, the pitch. And it's a little bit low. Samuel had set up low. That pitch misses the strike zone though. Comer at second, he's driven in a run with a double. Went to third on a wild pitch, and here's a comebacker snagged by Collins, and they've got the runner hung up. Throw to Williams at third. Williams flips it to the catcher, and they say he missed the tag. They say Samuel missed the tag. So Comer slides in safely, making it two to nothing. And Harless, very alert base running. He ends up at second base. So the fielder's choice and the RBI for Harless Comer scores from third to make it two to nothing. Yeah, there's no question. Luke Samuel just missed that tag. That's great heads up running by Garrett Comer to make it two nothing. And another runner in scoring position as Harless went to second as they were trying to get Comer at the plate. And one out in the inning. Good start to this one for St. Albans. They've staked their starter, Garrett Comer, to a two nothing lead. Comer. Crossing the plate. Here's a shot on the right field. It'll fall for a base hit. Eastone plays it on a bounce, gets it in quickly. Harless stops at third, runners at the corners. Third base hit of the inning for St. Albans. Gavin Comer gets himself a base hit. We've got a timeout called. Now batting for the Red Dragons, your right fielder number six. Mike and we'll have a conference on the mound. St. Albans has come out swinging, and they are putting the bat on the ball. And then you got a kid coming up now, Michael Heinemann. He bats in the sixth position, and he is another one that can lift the ball out of here. When you start looking at both these ball clubs, they are solid throughout the lineup. Got the conference on the mound, and St. Albans head coach Rick Whitman meeting with his base runners and the hitter who will come to the plate. Rick Whitman coaching third base. Jack Hudson, the hitting coach for the St. Albans team, coaches at first. And we're set to resume. Michael Heinemann at the plate. He shows bunt, pushes at it, but misses. And that's strike one. Heinemann trying to push it up that first base line. Harless had not broken from third. He stays put. Again, Gavin Comer running at first. Heinemann squares, then pulls it back, takes a pitch that's a strike, and Gavin Comer takes off for second. He's in at second safely without a throw. Second and third with one out here in the first inning. The pitch to Heinemann, curveball, hit first base side, and it's foul. First base umpire Phil Porter right there on the line to rule that one foul. Heinemann just missed an extra base hit and two RBI. Rex Foster, you mentioned him down at second base. His son, Kyle Foster, who played for Parkersburg, is now the head equipment manager at the University of Akron. He texted me last night. He said, I'll see you at the ball game because dad's <laughs> calling. The count 0-2. Oh 
Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Went after him with the fastball. Second strikeout of the inning. And Collins has an opportunity here to limit the damage if he can get Eggleton. Now seven to the plate for St. Albans, your first baseman, number 15, Bryce Eggleton. St. Albans has scored two, three hits in the inning. Collins to the plate, curveball right in there for a strike. Collins gets the ball back. He's ready to go. He's found a bit of a groove here trying to work quickly and get out of this jam second and third two outs now strike one to Eggleton the next one swung on and missed Eggleton hitting 327 on the season 18 hits 14 RBI Collins set at the belt here's the pitch swing and a miss got him to chase a low pitch but some damage done by St. Albans in that top half of the first inning. The Red Dragons score two runs on three hits, two extra base hits. And they strand two. After one half inning, it's St. Albans two and Cabell Midland coming to bat. You're listening to High School Championship Baseball on Metro News, the voice of West Virginia. Farmers and Mechanics Insurance knows about West Virginia's history, is excited about its future. For more than a century, Farmers and Mechanics have provided reliable insurance protection to the people and communities across the state. Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Company is proud to partner with high school sports and its commitment to teach and promote sportsmanship and citizenship. We head to the bottom of the first inning as St. Albans picked up a couple of runs in the top of the first. Well, Cabell Midland, it will be Landon Nida, Ray Ray Williams, and Kenyon Collins, the first three hitters to face Garrett Comer, the starting pitcher for the Red Dragons. Cabell Midland's Knights, the number one seed in this tournament, and Kyle, ready to go. That Cabell Midland batting lineup, Landon Nida. He leads off, followed by Ray Ray Williams, Kenyon Collins, the pitcher. Luke Samuel, the catcher, the cleanup hitter, Isaac Pettit in center field, bats fifth as the first pitch is in there for a strike. Jack Eastone in right field hitting sixth. Ben Folks, the second baseman, bats seventh. Bryce Alfrey, the DH hitting eighth. Hunter McSweeney, the shortstop, bats ninth. One and one the count to the leadoff hitter, Nida, for Cabell Midland. We go back to that first inning and that leadoff triple, we thought by Aiden Youngblood has been changed to a three base error. Here's the pitch to the plate and it's off the mitt. That delivery outside it goes to the backstop. All right so officially an error. So two runs on two hits in that inning for St. Albans. Here's ball four high. And what about an error on Nida in left field? I mentioned he came in a couple of steps and then he realized, uh-oh, got a problem. Tough error, though, isn't it? Yeah, it was a hard hit ball. It was. Here's Ray Ray Williams. Garrett Comer pitching with the 2-0 lead. Issues a leadoff walk and 
Williams trying to bunt his way on. Bunts it foul, third base side. We're in the bottom of the first. Any way you slice it, St. Albans scored two in the first. There you go. We've seen here in Charleston, teams have to respond. Cabell Middle needs to respond. You don't just have to get two or three. If you get one, though, you, you feel like you're right back in the game. There's it's a throwing error by Comer. That's going to go almost all the way to the bullpen. He tried to pick Nida off, and it got past Eggleton. So the runner at second base now. Just an errant throw over to first. Now Comer threw right into the runner, Nida. So each team with a first inning error. Nida being held on by the shortstop at second. The pitch to the plate, and it's a strike. St. Albans fans right in front of us. A little slow call by the <laughs> home plate umpire. They were wondering where that strike call was. Curveball swung on, fouled out of play, fought that pitch off. Cabell Midland in the dark jerseys. With the red numbers, white pants, St. Albans, the red jerseys, white numbers with some black trim. This pitch is inside. And gray pants, the road gray colors for the number four seed. It's going to be a hot day at the ballpark. Hasn't quite gotten there yet. It's close. We're headed for the 90s. Here's a pitch. And this one popped up down the right field line over into foul territory and making the catch. That's Heinemann, the right fielder. And a good job by Nida to tag up and go to third. Heinemann crossed over into foul territory near the bullpen. Now second Made the grab on the run. And Nida tagged up, went from second to third. Good read by Nida. He knew it was going to be foul, so he tagged up. No reason to go halfway on that on the foul ball. There's a strike to the plate. Kenyon Collins with the runner at third, trying to get him home with one out in the first. Dropping down Comer, three-quarter delivery, gets it in there for a strike. Working quickly, Comer dropping down again. This one's fouled off right side. Remember, he came to the ballpark and he had on white pants, and you wanted to see how dirty you could get them? <laughs> well, they're still sliding, but there's just no dirt out there. This artificial surface at Gomart Ballpark. Two-strike pitch. Hit on the ground to short, and that'll get the job done, get the run home. Youngblood fires over to first for the second out, but Nida scores from third. So the leadoff walk. Cabell Midland cashes in there. Nida walks. Now, went to second nine. base on the Your errant pickoff attempt. Tagged up on a foul ball caught by the right fielder. He scores on the ground ball off the bat of Peyton Collins. We've got a 2-1 ball game. And here's a bouncer to second base off the bat of Luke Samuel. And Gavin Comer handles that chance. So Cabell Midland again with the leadoff walk, an error. They get a run without a hit. After one complete, it is St. Albans two and Cabell Midland one. You're listening to High School Championship Baseball on Metro News, the voice of West Virginia. It doesn't matter if you're playing hard or working hard. Your workout only works out if you recover right. Recover. Chocolate milk helps you recover for what comes next. It's delicious and contains the right mix of protein and carbs to help refuel exhausted muscles. Ready? Recover. Repeat. Chocolate milk, the official beverage of high school sports, is brought to you by the American Dairy Association Mideast.
If you need money for college, the West Virginia National Guard is the only branch of service in the state that offers up to 100% paid college tuition and many other educational benefits. Leadership development, job training, work experience, and affordable health, dental, and life insurance while providing extra income each month. Visit NationalGuard.com. Head to the top of the second inning. St. Albans on top 2-1. And at the plate for the Red Dragons, Carson Womack. First pitch is a strike. Kenyon Collins springs the 0-1. It's fouled into the screen. So Collins, again, the ball off the bat from Youngblood changed to an error. It was a three-base error. Comer doubled. Youngblood scored. Collins struck out Riker Parker. There was a ground ball that scored a run on a play at the plate in which Garrett Comer dove under the tag. There's a curveball that's down low. Gavin Comer got himself a base hit, but Collins seemed to settle in there late in the inning, getting two strikeouts to get out of that jam. And that great, great base running by Garrett Comer is the difference in this ballgame so far. Two to one, St. Albans leading Cavill Midland. We play in the top half of the second. 2-2 pitch to Womack. He swings, hits it back to the mound. Big hop for Collins. And an easy throw to first. A leadoff hitter retired. 1-3 here in the St. Albans second inning. Now setting the plate for the Red Dragons, your designated hitter number one, Will Curry. Will Curry hitting for the center fielder, Tyler Richardson. Curry batting in the ninth spot will step in there against Kenyon Collins. Curry wearing number one. He takes a number one, a fastball outside. What was your number when you played? Oh, boy, it's been too long ago. <laughs> <laughs> I know my basketball number was 13 because that was my dad's birthday. 13 was my number through baseball, softball, basketball, the whole thing. Number 13. Seems to me baseball was a single-digit number, maybe mm. six or eight. Yeah, that's, that's kind of popular. But, uh, man, that's been too long ago. <laughs> this pitch swung on and missed. Two to one, St. Albans leading Cavill Midland. This pitch is outside. My number when I coached was 50. I remember that. 50. 50. Well, coaches usually get high numbers, don't yeah. they? Yeah. And the the uniforms with the bigger, larger numbers fit the bigger, larger men. <laughs> so number one is worn proudly by Will Curry. He is not a huge youngster, but he gets the walk. Yeah, ball four to Curry, so a one-out walk. Yeah, those, uh, he looks a uh, young, slender guy. Looks good wearing number one. There you go. Top of the order for St. Albans, Aiden Youngblood. Again, hit the ball sharply to left field. And reach third base. Imagine Landon Nida may back up a couple of steps this time. Big lead by Curry at first. Not going, and the first pitch is in there for a strike. Well, the one thing Kenyon Collins does not need is a pitch clock. He's ready to go. You generally see that in high school mm -hmm. games. Right. Here's a bunt attempt by Youngblood, and it's foul. Trying to bunt his way on there with one out. Third baseman back a little bit. And count 0-2 to Aiden Youngblood. Youngblood, the steadiest hitter. All season long for this St. Albans team, according to head coach Rick Williams, but he waves at an outside delivery here and goes down on strikes. Garrett Comer, the team's leader in RBI. Now seven to play for the he drove Dragons, in 14, the first Garrett run of this game. Comer. Already the fourth strikeout in the ball game for Kenyon Collins. We'll see if St. Albans does some running here now with two outs in the inning. Put that runner in motion. He goes on the first pitch. It's a strike. Throw down to second. No chance. It was on the shortstop side of the bag. As the second baseman, Folks, was there to cover. But again, a good jump 
and a great lead by Curry. He'd pay, been taking a, a, a large lead the entire at bat for Youngblood. And he had that lead and took off. He steals second. He's in scoring position for Comer, who swings and misses. High fastball. And Collins threw it past him. Well, you were right when you said Kenyon Collins has settled down. He's throwing some fire right now. Collins ready with the next. Here's a curveball swung on. Hit into center. Pettit coming on. Goes down on one knee and makes the catch. So St. Albans gets the walk with one out in the inning, but they strand that runner. No runs, no hits, no errors, and a runner left. The Dragons have left three. We're in the middle of the second. It is St. Albans 2, Cabell Midland 1. You're listening to High School Championship Baseball on Metro News, the voice of West Virginia. Hi, I'm Heather, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich is getting the perfect bite. It's probably not the first bite, it's the second or the third, with the juicy chicken and the delicious pickle. The bite with the pickle is it. I mean, that is like the magic combination. Hi, I'm Jennifer. A little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich is the combination of the warm, soft bun against this delicious piece of chicken. The bun is just this soft little hug around the chicken that's so perfect in every bite. We are there for you, to care for you at the health plan. We are here for you. The health plan is a proud partner with the West Virginia SSAC and has been your most trusted carrier for over 40 years. Log on to healthplan.org for more information. We are there for you, to care for you. Greatness is built with chocolate milk, the official beverage of the WVSSAC. The American Dairy Association Mideast reminds you low-fat chocolate milk has the right mix of fluids, carbs, and protein to rehydrate and refuel muscles. Is your team built with chocolate milk? For more information, visit drink-milk.com. We head to the bottom of the second inning. Kyle Wiggs has his chair fixed, <laughs> I think. Got the uh, got the mic cord tangled up in one of oh, the wheels. Oh, that's not good. That's not good for the mic cord. It, it kind of sets you in a position, too. You can't move either. Yeah. 2-1 ball game. St. Albans with the two runs in the first. Cabell Midland got a leadoff walk in the bottom of the first and moved that runner around, and Nida would score. So it's 2-1. Red Dragons, first pitch. To Pettit, this one is hit into left field. It's a base hit. Playing it on a bounce, Womack gets it in quickly. Second inning in a row. Cabell Midland has put a leadoff hitter on base. Now stepping to the plate for the night, your right fielder, number 11, Jack Eastone. There's Jack Eastone. Eastone's had quite a postseason. And he's at the plate with this runner on. Third baseman Parker pulled in. Eastone swinging away. He drives it to left, but playable for Womack. Womack makes the grab. Hard hit ball, but out number one. Eastone goes up there aggressively, swings at the first pitch, and he flies out to left. We've seen that, though, from both teams. They come up swinging. They're not looking for anything. Second baseman, number eight, Ben Sparks. There is Ben Folks with the runner at first, Pettit. He's going. Pitch is a ball, and the throw came out of the catcher's hand errantly. Harless, either his uh, hand was too sticky or maybe wet because that ball ended up on the third base side of the pitcher's mound. It just came out of his hand wrong, and Youngblood was able to get to it. So it didn't go into the outfield, but an errant throw and a stolen base for Pettit. He's at second base with one out. And here's Folks at the plate with a chance to try to uh, drive in the potential tying run. Comer drops down again three quarters and fires a strike. Runner at second. 
And there's two outs in the inning. This pitch is way high. Cavill Midland trying to get the game tied after St. Albans scored two in the first. Base runner backs off second and Folks fouls a sidearm pitch off to the screen. Talking earlier with George Brumfield, who's the dad of Tracy Brumfield, head coach at Cavill Midland. He says he has one claim to fame. I'll tell you what that is here in just a second. <laughs> Here's a fake throw to second base. The shortstop Youngblood getting behind that base runner, but no throw. George Brumfield was the head coach of Wayne mm -hmm. High School, 1978. This pitch fouled into the screen. He says that he is credited with the coach that gave John Lowry his first state championship. <laughs> because in 78, Jefferson beat Wayne seven to nothing in that championship game. This pitch is hit back to the pitcher. Nice play. He throws to third, and they've got the runner held up. Parker, the third baseman to the shortstop, Young Blood. Now the pitcher covers, and they tag him out. And Folks will end up at second, so good base running there. Nice play by the pitcher, Comer, as the ball was hit right back to him. He had to reach down. Fired to the third baseman, Parker. Comer alertly headed to third. Parker ran at the runner. Shortstop Youngblood was involved, and then the pitcher tags him out. So 1-5-6-1 on that put out at third base. And there's two away. Folks at second now. Now setting the plate for Cabell Midland. You're designated here number six, Bryce Alfred. And there's Alfred. He swings at the first pitch, hits it in the air, right side, and it's going to, ooh, man, it landed in the seats, and the right fielder, Heinemann, flew over the wall and ended up in the seats. To check his because he went at it full force, too. He was on a sprint to try to catch this ball. And he picks himself up off the ground, but he's shaken up. Boom, right into the seats. Yeah, he dove head first into the seats. The seat got him in the midsection, I think. Yeah, no one was down row. there and seated there. He's going to climb back over that short fence down that third baseline, or first baseline, rather. They check on him. The ball just got over the fence. It was in the first row of the seats, and again, Heinemann went flying in there, went over the wall, and uh, got a seat right in the midsection. They check on him. He's okay. He gets a nice hand. He'll go back to his position. Ended up flat on the ground under that first row of seats. Kind of laid there for a second, but he got up and shook it off. Folks from the Marshall Health Services, which are at all championship games, got down there in a hurry. Well, these kids, <laughs> they, they give it everything, you know? It's, it's fun to watch. It really is. Cabell Midland coaches back to the dugout. They had raced out there. Well, now, wait a minute. Race is a. <laughs> <laughs> there was a sense of urgency. <laughs> there was. I'll give you that. <laughs> Owen won the count. And now a pickoff play at second. He's off the bag and they get him. Shortstop Youngblood got in there behind the base runner, Folks. And a nice quick move by Garrett Comer. Comer came set at the letters, spun towards second base. And again, the daylight play there as Youngblood got in behind him and they tag him out. So the inning ends. No runs on two base hits. For Cavill Midland, they lose two runners on the base paths. No errors, no runners left. After two complete, it's St. Albans two, Cavill Midland one. You're listening to High School Championship Baseball on Metro News, the voice of West Virginia. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you.
An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Civil and environmental consultants proud to support high school student athletes across West Virginia. Participation in high school sports helps develop leadership and teamwork skills. CEC knows that teamwork and leadership skill learned in the classroom and on the fields and courts can carry over into life. CEC, big firm capabilities, small firm culture. Riker Parker leading off the third for St. Albans. Red Dragons up on the Cabell Midland Knights. Two to one into the third. Count two and one to Parker. This pitch swung on and hit softly to third. Up with it, Williams, the throw across, and they get him. That was odd coming off the bat as it sounded like good contact, but it was a slow roller to third. And Williams made the play, scooped it up, throwing across the diamond. One away in the St. Albans third inning. Gabble Midland lost two runners on the base pass in that last inning. They had the comebacker with a runner caught between second and third, and then the runner picked off second to end the inning. Oh, if you're Tracy Brumfield, you hope that doesn't come back to haunt you. You're trailing two to one. Here's a fly ball to right, charging in as Eastone. He slides and makes the grab. Great job. Jack Eastone. Read it well off the bat. Left-handed hitter. And he charged in, slid down, and made the grab. And you can tell this is brand new. I mean, brand new AstroTurf because the pig pen effect yeah. is in full effect. Every time a ball hits, every time you put your foot down, when you slide, there's the black pellets that spray up from behind you. Looks like black dirt, but it's not. Owen won the count, and that's a strike. It's 0-2. And, Two-strike pitch, curveball, his best of the game. Collins gets the swing and miss. Comer down on strikes, a very quick third inning for Kenyon Collins. St. Albans retired in order for the first time today. Ground out, fly out, strike out. No runs, no hits, no errors, no runners left. Middle of the third, it is St. Albans 2, Cabell Midland 1. You're listening to High School Championship Baseball on Metro News, the voice of West Virginia. Thornhill, our goal is to provide you with the best automotive experience. From our state-of-the-art facilities, amenities, and certified staff, we call family. You'll be offered the best experience you deserve. We take pride in our focus for customer care, bringing the best quality and support for all of our customers' needs. What are you waiting for? It's your time to get behind the wheel with Thornhill. Get started now at thornhillautomotive.com. Just tag it at Thornhill, where it's all here for you. US 119 Chapmanville and Logan, WV to Belfry, Kentucky. You know, it's good to have options when choosing health coverage for yourself, for your family, or for your employees. And you've got options with the health plan. Known for exceptional service and support with a nationwide network of physician, flexible coverage options you can count on, and competitive rates you'll appreciate. The health plan. Plan on it. Learn more at healthplan.org. Bottom of the third, two to one lead. St. Albans up on Cabell Midland. And Bryce Alfrey was at the plate as he fouls the first delivery in the third inning off third base side. Alfrey was at the plate when Ben Folks got picked off second base, so he starts this third inning with a fresh count. And Comer gets ahead 0-1. Comer will bring it in. And it's right in there as well. 0-2 the count. 
Would Homer has been very efficient. Would you say both pitchers have yes. settled in? Yes. The offense came early. Two in the first for St. Albans. One in the first for Cabell Midland. Here's a foul to the screen. No walks. Actually, one walk. I'm sorry. One walk allowed by Comer. No strikeouts so far. So he's been pretty efficient. Here's a curveball that's hit into left center field. That's down for a base hit over the head of Youngblood running with his back to the infield from the shortstop position. And Womack retrieves it, gets it back in. Well, Cabell Midland's three for three in terms of getting that leadoff man on base. See how they play it here with the number nine hitter. Pretty good chance he'll be butting. Alfrey gets the second hit of the game for Cabell Midland. McSweeney squares the bunt, gets it down. Nicely done. Pitcher comes off the mound. Comer gets it, fires it to first. And McSweeney retired 1-3, but the sacrifice is good. Alfrey in scoring position for the top of the order. Knight up, and then Ray Ray Williams. That was a beautiful bunt. Beautiful bunt by Jared Nethercutt. Now Here is Nida. Nida with hitting room through the left side of the infield. The shortstop is behind the runner holding him on, and that's where he hits the ball. Between third and short, the shortstop, Youngblood, does backhand it deep in the hole, but no chance to throw out either the lead runner, Alfrey, or the hitter, Nida. So it's first and third. He kept that from going to the outfield, and that saved a run, at least for now. Now Ray Ray Williams will try and tie the game. Get that runner home from third with one out of the inning. Cabell Midland trailing two to one, but runners at the corners with one out. Williams batting 327. And here's the pitch. He fouls it off, had a rip at that first pitch. Cabell Midland hitters aggressive going up there. And Ray Ray Williams had a sacrifice fly to right field. His first time up that moved the runner, Nida over. Nida up at first, getting his lead. He goes. The pitch is high. They fake the throw, so a stolen base for Nida. Second and third, one out. Williams now can put Cabell Midland in front for the first time in this game with a base hit. The count one and one. Comer winds, sidearm delivery, and it's a little bit high. Third baseman Parker, even with the bag. About seven feet off the bag. Now he creeps in as the pitch comes in. Here's a fly ball, shallow right. Hindman on the move, makes the catch. Not deep enough, though. Alfrey had tagged, and he went about 10 feet, but he retreated. That's a huge second out. As Comer gets the pop-up off the bat of Ray Ray Williams for the second out of the inning, the runners remain at second and third. Yeah, now Kenyon yeah, Collins has to have a, a hit or an error to get that run from third home. Collins did drive in the run with an RBI ground out in the first. Sidearm pitch hit to short. Youngblood is there, and he bobbles it. Everyone's safe. That runner came across and provided a little bit of interference, and you have to believe that affected the shortstop Youngblood. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, there's no doubt about it. About the time the shortstop Youngblood was going to field the ball, the runner was there. And that was Nida held up, skipped over the baseball. He knew exactly what he was doing. Heads up play. That runner in his field of vision, Collins got a glove on it but bobbled it. And that allowed Alfrey to score from third base. And we're tied at two. And Nida is at third. So runners at the corners with two outs in the inning. And here's Luke Samuel. He takes a sidearm delivery in there for a strike. Each team with an error that figured in the opposition scoring in this game so far. And we're tied at two. This pitch inside backed him up. Got some good hitters on both teams, but we've seen a lot of small balls so far in this game. Tied at two here on the bottom of the third inning. 
It's interesting that Kenyon Collins hasn't taken off yet for second. Now he does. Sidearm delivery outside for a ball. They fake the throw again. And a stolen base, second and third once again. Two outs in the inning. You know how Major League Baseball has mics on some players and they can hear? He must be mic'd up because he heard you say that. <laughs> he took off immediately. This pitch swung on and missed. It was down and in. Two and two the count to the cleanup hitter, catcher Luke Samuel. Big, big hitter right now for Cabell Midland and a big out to get for St. Albans. Here's the pitch. Sidearm pitch swung on and missed. So Cabell Midland settles for one, but they tie the game. Leadoff base hit. They bunt him to second. And he goes to third before scoring on an error. So one run, two hits, one error, and two runners left. We have played three complete, decided nothing. It's Cabell Midland two, St. Albans two. You're listening to High School Championship Baseball on Metro News, the voice of West Virginia. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Back at the ballpark, field turf is the trusted choice for athletic fields in West Virginia. Field turf is a proud partner of the WVSSAC. We head to the top of the fourth inning, tied at two. 2-2 two -two game, and Heinemann leads off for St. Albans here in the fourth. This right-handed pitcher, Kenyon Collins, has retired the last five hitters he's faced. He hasn't given up a base hit since the first. And we are tied at two. There's a pitch high to Heinemann. Third member of our broadcast team today is Chris Lawrence on the field. Kyle, you were talking about the uh, turf here at Gomart Ballpark in Charleston. This was part of a bigger project. As we see the hit in the air. And a fly ball, a pop fly actually, out into shallow right field. The second baseman, Folks, makes the catch. I don't know how he hit that ball. That pitch either. was <laughs> down around his feet and he kind of skipped back away from the pitch and hit it in the air to the first base side for the pop-up. All right, Chris. All right, Gomar Ballpark is owned by the city of Charleston. The city of Charleston, the administration here decided they were gonna use some of their American Rescue Plan money along with several other funding sources and they were gonna put down a new surface here because this field gets a lot of play. Not only do the Dirty Birds play here and the State High School Baseball Tournament is here, a lot of local high school games end up being played here, plus, the Marshall Thundering Herd, at least until they get their uh, field built in Huntington, this is their home field. So a lot of baseball gets played, and the maintenance on the field was a big issue. They put down the turf here, but it was part of a bigger project, $6 million from the American Rescue Fund, but they also turfed 10 other fields around town, which included Little League baseball, uh, softball, and soccer fields all around the city of Charleston. So 10 fields, including the uh, most conspicuous here at Gomart Ballpark, got turf and that uh, the city r reasoned that that, uh, that that enhances the youth programs here in uh, in the city of Charleston allows for uh, more opportunities to get out and play and that followed up a, a bond issue here in Kanawha County from about 10 or 12 years ago where voters agreed to put turf on every football field in the county so turf is not a new thing here in uh, the Kanawha Valley I can remember a time when it was actually kind of a novelty to have a turf field now if you're still playing on grass, you're kind of <laughs> unusual. You're the outlier. This pitch misses high. And again, at the plate, you've got Bryce Eggleton. So that's ball four. One out walk 
issue to Eggleton. And Fred, eventually we're going to see a four-class high school baseball tournament. So that adds three more games. You have to have a turf facility to get that in to make sure that weather's not going to push you back for two or three days once you add four more teams to this tournament. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they go with a stay with a Thursday, Friday, Saturday deal and just add two games on Thursday, which they probably will. I would think that's what they will do, but I yeah. have to wait and see when that, if that is approved and when it goes into effect would be probably for the 2024 season, I would think. Here's a foul straight back, and that's another reason for the turf. So if you do that, you play four games on Thursday, you'd play four on Friday, you'd play four on – Exactly. I mean, that, you'd beat – a grass and dirt field to death. Yeah, and also that. playing here now is the Mountain East Conference because they don't play yeah. in Beckley anymore. 1-1 one, one pitch to Carson Womack. Runner at first, again, high and tight as he backed away from that inside delivery. 2-2 two, two games, St. Albans and Cabell Midland were playing in the fourth inning. Two runs in the first for St. Albans, single runs in the first and third for Cabell Midland. And the count to Womack is two balls and two strikes. Let's pitch inside again. First time up back in the second inning. Carson Womack hit a short grounder back to the pitcher, Kenyon Collins, who's thrown out. So he's trying to get on for the first time in this game. He swings and pops it foul. It'll go over our press box facility out of play. Sun splashed field today. No clouds in the sky. And we anticipate this tournament being played on schedule with no weather issues today or tomorrow. Here's a swing and a pop up. This one in fair territory. Third base side, Williams makes the catch on the green turf. And that's out number two. A couple of pop ups in this inning. And the number nine hitter. Will Curry will come to the plate with Eggleton on it first. Now seven the plate through Red Dragons. Number one, Will Curry. We'll see if St. Albans puts that runner in motion with two outs. Eggleton extends his lead. Collins peeks at him, then throws over. Eggleton dives back in safely. Usually second time around, hitters are more used to the pitcher, but it seems like they were hitting him better in the first inning than they were now. Collins again checks that runner. Here's the pitch, curveball. And it's in there for a strike, caught the inside part of the plate. University in Hedgesville next, I would imagine. Those teams have arrived at the ballpark here as we're in the fourth. There's a swing and a miss. It's a nice little drive for Hedgesville. Yeah. Nice little drive for University as well. There's a curve and a beauty for a strike. Curry down on strikes. That ends the inning. No runs, no hits. A walk and a runner left. And St. Albans is stranded four. We are in the middle of the fourth. It is Cavill Midland two. St. Albans two. You're listening to High School Championship Baseball on Metro News, the voice of West Virginia. proud partner with the West Virginia SSAC and has been your most trusted carrier for over 40 years. Log on to healthplan.org for more information. We are there for you to care for you at the health plan. We are here for you. So put on your feet, stretch. 
Chick-fil-A and its 18 West Virginia owner-operators salute the more than 86,000 boys and girls that participate in scholastic sports in our state. Chick-fil-A recognizes that participation in high school sports helps to develop leadership and teamwork skills that prepare each participant for life. The same values that Chick-fil-A in your community shares. Chick-fil-A, proud to support West Virginia high school sports as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Tight one, tied at two. And it'll be Isaac Pettit leading off the bottom of the fourth. He swings at the first pitch, fouls it out of play. Strike one. Cabell Midland won their only state baseball championship back in 2003. They beat Fairmont Senior 2-1. to one. They lost a couple of other times. 2006, they lost to South Charleston. 2013, lost to Hedgesville. There's a high strike. That went in about the letters. St. Albans has won more recently, of course. Yeah, they won two now. This pitch is high, 2017, 2019. This is the eighth trip to state for St. Albans. Both times in that championship games, they beat Hurricane. Here's a smash past the third baseman into left field. That's a base hit. And a leadoff single for Pettit. Here in the Cavill Midland fourth inning. Well, again, they've gotten the leadoff hitter on base all four innings. Runner at first, Jack Eastone at the plate. And he smashes one down the left field line. That one is caught. On the run by Womack, a great running catch by the St. Albans left fielder. Well, he was on his horse immediately. He knew it was a shot. He traveled a long way here at Goomart Ballpark and made the great catch and got it back to the infield quickly. And the runner stays put at first base. That was a great running catch on a ball that was hit very hard down the left field line. Runner stays at first. That's Pettit. Now he breaks for second. Taking all the way is Folks, and the throw from the catcher. Harless goes into center field, but Tyler Richardson is there to back things up. Gets it back in quickly, so a stolen base. But a good fundamental play. They're going to bring him back, though. Okay. They do send the runner back to first base. wonder why. I, I didn't see... Oh, it was interference oh, yeah. from the umpire. Yeah. On the throw, the umpire Harless. called him immediately, too. Yeah. Harless went back to throw, and his elbow caught the home plate umpire, Randy Edge, in the mask. So you don't see that often. Actually, it was the throwing hand that caught the umpire. So he really had no choice. I mean, that's the rule. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Very unfortunate for Cavill Midland as Pettit had that base stolen. And just a, you know, a great play immediately, the home plate umpire, he called it. Of course, I was watching the runner. Here's the strike one pitch, and it's inside, one ball, one strike. That's, uh, that's just a tough break. When Tristan Harless winds up, he gives, <laughs> gives you everything he has back there. And the throw this time as the runner takes off. It's on the money, but the base runner beats it. And a stolen base for Pettit after all. So in that, in that situation, I mean, you have to call it because the throw was errant. The, right. the contact with the umpire made the throw sail into center field. Now, the runner didn't advance, but still. And, and, to, and to your point, he had, he had second stolen. Here's a swing and a fly ball into left. Playable for Womack, who has time. He's under it. Makes the catch for the second out. So Folks is retired. And it's up to Alfrey. Alfrey will come to the plate and bat from the right side. The potential go-ahead run down at second base in this 2-2 game. A little easier catch that time for Carson Womack in left field. And Womack made a great running catch on a hard-hit ball. And that one hung up there and allowed him to get under it for out number two. Here's Alfrey. At the plate, runner at second, the pitch, he swings. Hits it in the air right side. 
Second baseman Gavin Comer drifts into shallow right field. He's called off by Heinemann, who makes the catch. So Heinemann, the right fielder, puts that one away. And three fly ball outs for Garrett Comer. Two to left field, one to right. Leadoff single and a stolen base, but Pettit is stranded. No runs, one hit. No errors and a runner left. We played four complete. It's Cabell Midland two, St. Albans two. You're listening to High School Championship Baseball on Metro News, the voice of West Virginia. Farmers and Mechanics Insurance knows West Virginia, and we understand how much all of our high school teams and athletes mean to the communities that we have served for more than 100 years. That's why we're proud of our partnership with the West Virginia SSAC. Their commitment to teach and promote sportsmanship and citizenship is the key to future success. Protecting what matters most to you. Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Companies, a proud partner of the West Virginia SSAC. No matter what it is you need, you'll find it at your local Parmar store. From gas to grocery, snacks, and everything else you always seem to run out of, Parmar Stores has it. Need more savings? Download the Parmar app and sign up for the Parmar Rewards Card. You won't only see our stores in your neighborhoods, you'll see us in your neighborhoods too. We are proud to be in your town and proud to be a part of the community. Come see us at Parmar Stores. And remember, if there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. I know you've heard this before, but if there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Parmar stores have 200 locations throughout the region to serve you. Parmar stores, the official store of high school sports in West Virginia. We head to the top of the fifth inning, tied up at two, Kyle. 2-2 two -two game. St. Albans did a damage in the first. They've got the top of the order here. Mm -hmm. Aiden Youngblood. He takes a pitch down low. Mm -hmm. Kenyon mm -hmm. Collins mm -hmm. has not a lot of hits since that first inning. And just a couple of base runners since, a couple of walks. 1-0 pitch right in there for strike one. Ray Ray Williams even with the bag at third. McSweeney deep at short. The next pitch, curveball. That's hit back to the pitcher. Waist high hop for Collins. The throw on to first. The leadoff hitter retired in the fifth for St. Albans. So the only inning that St. Albans got its leadoff hitter on base. That was the first, and they scored their two runs in that frame. Cabell Midland has gotten its leadoff hitter on base each of the first four innings. They had a bad base running inning in the second. They lost a pair, not one, but two runners on the bases. Both were in scoring position. One runner thrown out at third, one runner thrown out at second on a pickoff. The 1-0 pitch misses the outside edge. Garrett Comer at the plate. He had an RBI double in the first inning. He's one for two officially. This pitch hit sharply third base side but foul. Williams comes up with it. Watch Williams a couple of times. Really smooth over there at third base. Gets the glove down on the turf to make sure it doesn't get under the glove. And really comes up with a good throwing motion. The next one is fouled off the catcher. And that's strike two. That'll wake you up sometime. Yeah. And the home plate umpire Randy Edge will head out to the mound, underhand the baseball to Kenyon Collins, give the catcher Samuel an opportunity to uh, shake off the cobwebs a bit. And then Randy came back and said, you okay? <laughs> I like that. 2-2 Two -two the count. This pitch hit hard into center field, charging and playing it on a bounce as Pettit. Thought about diving, but you're on an island out there. If that gets past you, it probably is an inside-the-park home run in a big ballpark like this. So Pettit pulled up, played the ball on a hop. Here's Riker Parker. Well, here's the kid that Coach Whitman would really like to see get going. Big kid leads the team in home runs. He's 0 for 2. Struck out and ground out to the shortstop. Big lead at first. The pitch is a curveball that misses outside. 
We're in the fifth. Third hit of the game for St. Albans. Two runs on three hits and an error for the Red Dragons. 1-0 pitch. Parker, big swing and a miss. Cavill Midland with single runs in the first and the third. Two runs on five hits and an error for the Knights. Here's a swing and a pop-up foul. As Hoppy Kirchival would say, in full disclosure, Riker Parker's sister, Lowen, works for us at our offices in Charleston. And I know she's listening to the game. She's not here? She has to work. She has to work. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Fred. You I, couldn't give her a personal I, day? She had to work. You know, hey. There's a throw to first and Comer's back in safely. She's sitting in a nice air-conditioned office. <laughs> <laughs> Runner goes. The pitch is a curve for a ball. The throw down is past the shortstop into center field, but Pettit backs it up. So a stolen base for Comer. Comer got a great jump. Samuel made it close. Pretty good throw. But it was to the first base side and got away into shallow center field, but again backed up by that outfielder. That's a tough pitch to handle to get a, go a good throw off. And the runners at second base with one out now. Now timeout called by the hitter, Riker Parker. Parker looking for his first career state tournament hit in RBI. Here's the pitch. Curveball hit him in the head. Hit him in the back of the helmet. And he fires that bat. That was a breaking pitch. And Parker ducked his head, turned towards the catcher. And took it off the back of the skull. It may have got a shoulder, Man, too. Exactly. Came up and boom, boom. First and second now with one out for Tristan Harless, the number four hitter. He's driven in a run today. Bats from the left side. We'll try and put St. Albans back in front. Pitches outside for a ball. A couple of runners on. Only one down, down in the inning. Had a 2-2 game in the bottom of the fifth inning. Shortstop McSweeney up the middle holding the runner on. This pitch is a fastball on the inside part of the plate. St. Albans infield looking for a double play. Second baseman Folks deep at his position. Nethercourt, the first baseman playing behind the runner who's getting a large lead off first base. The lead runner is Comer down at second. Now timeout called. The entire left side of the infield is open. As the pitch comes in, and it's fouled off the foot, off the left foot. That's a strike. Something that Tracy Brumfield's got to start thinking about. That was pitch number 85 for Kenyon Collins. Cabell Midland has had bullpen activity in this game. St. Albans has not. Here's a pitch that gets past the catcher. It's a ball inside. The runners move up. Big turn at third by Comer. And he'll retreat. Second and third now. That takes the double play out of the equation. He was almost halfway down the line. Talk about a big turn. And timeout called. We're going to have a conference on the mound involving the Cabell Midland pitcher catcher all four infielders they'll gather Cabell Midland had a stretch back in the early 2000s where they were here or at least at the state tournament just about every year five trips in seven years between 2006 uh, 2000 and 2006 then they had a gap until 2013 when they got back and let's go down on the field to Chris. You guys mentioned that uh, Riker Parker's sister works for us. Owen Westbrook from that Tyler Consolidated team is actually a uh, second cousin to our own Dave Weekly. So we have Metro News. We're ingrained in the community. <laughs> Pitch to the plate. Hit on the ground. First base side. It's bobbled by Nethercourt. He dives at the runner and gets him. Out at first base. But a runner scores from third. And St. Albans is back in front, 3-2, to two, an RBI on the ground out by Harless, his second RBI of the game. And Parker ends up at third base. Harless out at first on a bang-bang play. Nethercourt bobbled it, 
and dove for the bag. And with that glove on his left hand, he did beat the runner to the bag for out number two. Here's Comer. Comer swings, hits it in the air. Pop fly right side, another court in foul territory makes the catch. We'll let Chris finish his story when we return. And St. Albans retakes the lead. They get a run on one base hit. No errors and a runner left on base. We're in the middle of the fifth. And St. Albans is back in front. It's the Red Dragons three, Cabell Midland two. You're listening to High School Championship Baseball on Metro News, the voice of West Virginia. Thornhill, our goal is to provide you with the best automotive experience. From our state-of-the-art facilities, amenities, and certified staff, we call family. You'll be offered the best experience you deserve. We take pride in our focus for customer care, bringing the best quality and support for all of our customers' needs. What are you waiting for? It's your time to get behind the wheel with Thornhill. Get started now at thornhillautomotive.com. Just tag it at Thornhill, where it's all here for you. US 119 Chapmanville and Logan, WV to Belfry, Kentucky. The West Virginia Secondary School Activities Commission promotes athletics that provides lifelong and life quality learning experiences to high school students while enhancing their achievement of educational goals. The WVSSAC, our reason why. Well, Cabell Midland, the number one seed in this class AAA tournament, finds themselves now trailing by one, three, two, as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Three, two lead for St. Albans. Chris, you still with us? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Yeah, I was, I was just mentioning the fact you said Riker Parker and his sister works for us at the radio station here in Charleston. Dave Weekly's cousin is Owen Westbrook of that Tyler Consolidated team. So. Throughout the state of West Virginia, we have outlets, and our kids go to these schools too. So it's uh, it's one of the neat things about being part of this event is a lot of these kids. You know, my kids went to Hurricane, and all the way through these championship games, and uh, kids that I I saw in church as they grew up. I get to, I've I've gotten the opportunity to watch them in some of these championship games and actually be a part of a broadcast. It's really kind of a special deal and a, and a privilege for us to get to do something like that. So, And to add to the Riker Parker story, his older sister, Brielle, yeah. used to work for us. She did. She's down in Florida now. Fly ball into left, and charging in is the left fielder, Womack, who makes the catch for out number one here in the Cabell Midland portion of the fifth inning. Three to two, St. Albans. And, Fred, I know this has happened to you, but – just in the last couple of years, you talk about working for Metro News, and we all have for decades, I've encountered the children of some of the players I called games for in the 90s. Here's a, another fly ball into left and another chance for Womack, who makes the catch on the run. My question for you, have you done any grandkids yet? No, but today I do. I'm putting the headset <laughs> on the table, and I'm walking out. <laughs> you would think that's going to happen soon, uh, particularly in boys' high school basketball. But uh, Chris is so right. I mean, you do get ingrained with these kids, and especially when you see teams that have kids that are in all different sports, and they come to state tournament action three years in a row for, for some of them. And it's just uh, we get to do a great job. I mean, this is a pretty good place to work, Kyle. Oh, no doubt. No doubt about that. Here's strike one to the plate. Ray Ray Williams, Comer pitching with the lead again, has retired the first two in the fifth, and a curveball just misses. People will say, what do you do for a living? I talk. <laughs> <laughs> talk about a, an efficient performance. Garrett Comer oh. in the 50s with his pitch count, and That's we've 57. got two outs in the fifth. 57, and and. and Contrary to that fact, Kenyon Collins has thrown 87 pitches. 14 outs on 57 pitches. And here's a delivery down low. He's walked just one. 
And that was the first right. runner he faced. First hitter, hitter of the game. Yeah. Check swing, and there's right. number two pitch outside. So Ray Ray Williams, the potential tying run, trots down to first base, two out walk. Kenyon Collins will step in. Harless, the catcher, meets the pitcher Comer out in front of the mound. They have a couple of words. Kenyon Collins 0 for 2 in this game. Out on the ground out and he was safe on an error. Here's the pitch. She drops down and fires a strike on the outside part of the plate. Strike one to Collins. Runner at first, two outs. Three to two. St. Albans leading Cavill Midland in the fifth inning of play. The next one, sidearm delivery check swing. In there for a strike. St. Albans definitely one of the most improved teams in the state. As the runner goes, and there's strike three. Three sidearm pitches for strikes, two on the outside part of the plate. Then he came inside, got under the hands for strike three, and Cabell Midland retired in the fifth. No runs, no hits. There was a walk, one runner left. We've played five complete. It is St. Albans three and Cabell Midland two. You're listening to High School Championship Baseball on Metro News, the voice of West Virginia. about the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich is getting the perfect bite. It's probably not the first bite. It's the second or the third with the juicy chicken and the delicious pickle. The bite with the pickle is it. I mean, that is like the magic combination. Hi, I'm Jennifer. A little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich is the combination of the warm, soft bun against this delicious piece of chicken. The bun is just this soft little hug around the chicken that's so perfect in every bite. Well, we head to the top of the sixth inning in this one. 3-2 the lead for the Red Dragons of St. Albans. Coming up about 50 minutes after this game is concluded, it'll be the second half of this AAA bracket. The number two seed University's Hawks against the number three seed, the Eagles of Hedgesville. And then coming up later today, we go to Class AA, number one Winfield against number four Lewis County. First pitch around 5 o'clock this afternoon. Followed by number two, Kaiser, against number three, Shady Spring. Shady Spring, one of just three teams that returned from last year's state tournament. A couple of college pitchers hooking up in this one, and it's been a well-pitched game. It's been a well-played game. As St. Albans, Albans with Garrett Dragon Comer on the mound. We mentioned earlier that Cabell Midland starting pitcher, Kenyon Collins, has signed with Dayton. He'll play in college, and Garrett Comer will play in college as well. As he gets a swing and a miss. This is Michael Heineman leading things off for St. Albans, so a swing and a miss for Collins. And the 0-1 pitch is on its way, swinging a foul right side. And again, Garrett Comer will play at Waynesboro College. That's a Division III school, Waynesboro, Pennsylvania, just across the Maryland state line from Hagerstown. Here's a base hit up the middle. Just stuck the bat out there, got the barrel on it, and Heinemann singles into center. So a leadoff base hit in the sixth inning for St. Albans. As we're in the top of the sixth inning, Kyle, that is a huge runner down at first base right now. Cabell yeah, Midland doesn't want him to score, and St. Albans wants him to score. Pretty good chance we'll see some small ball here. 
Hagleton at the plate. He's walked and struck out. He calls timeout before Kenyon Collins can begin his motion to the plate. St. Albans has the bullpen going for the first time. A right-hander up and throwing. Cavill Midland has had some bullpen activity a couple of different times in this game. Here's the pitch to the plate, and it is a high strike. And now we need to make a pitching change. That's Nethercut on the mound now for Cavill Midland. He's come over from first base. And the runner goes. The pitch is a strike. Throw to second, a high throw. And Heinemann dives in with the stolen base. So St. Albans with a potential insurance run in scoring position. So Jared Nethercut is on the mound now for the Knights. Takes over for Collins. Skirball ball swung and fouled into the screen. The pitching change in the sixth for Cabell Midland. The St. Albans leads this game three to two. Samuel trots out to have a quick conference there, make sure they're on the same page. Looks like it will double check. Looks like that Kenyon Collins just went to first base. So they just flip flop positions. Hitting room in right center for Eggleton. Another cut checks the runner at second who's dancing around. There's a high fastball, a swing and a miss. And the first out recorded by Nethercut, one away in the sixth inning. Now stepping to the plate for the Red Dragons, number two, Carson Here's Womack. Here's Carson Womack. He's 0 for 2 on the day. Hit a comebacker to the pitcher and popped up to third. 3 to 2, St. Albans. And the runner breaks for third. He's picked off. He'll be thrown out. Good quick move by Nethercut as Heinemann took off. And St. Albans loses a runner at the plate. He lifted that leg but didn't go towards home plate. Heinemann took off early. Nethercut throws to third for the 1 5 put out and the second out of this inning. Now a pop foul out of play. How big is that out? That's huge. In the sixth inning, and St. Albans leading just by 1 3 2. An insurance run was down at second with one out. And the runner picked off the bases. Strike one to Womack at the plate. Base is empty now, two away. Here's the pitch. And it's down low. Again, there's activity in the St. Albans bullpen. Comer, his pitch count was low through five. You would think he would start the sixth. Here's a base hit. Nope. A looper to the shortstop. That ball snatched out of the air by McSweeney. Line drive off the bat of Womack and McSweeney makes the play for the third out. So Nethercourt, his first inning, faces the minimum, gave up a hit, but picked the runner off between second and third base. No runs, one hit, no errors, no runners left. Middle of the sixth, that is St. Albans three and Cabell Midland two. You're listening to High School Championship Baseball on Metro News, the voice of West Virginia. Ready? It doesn't matter if you're playing hard, or working hard. Your workout only works out if you recover right. Recover. Chocolate milk helps you recover for what comes next. It's delicious and contains the right mix of protein and carbs to help refuel exhausted muscles. Ready? Recover. recover. Repeat. Chocolate milk, the official beverage of high school sports, is brought to you by the American Dairy Association Mideast.
Welcome back to Gomart Ballpark. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning, and uh, Kyle is you suggested Garrett Comer stays in there on the mound for the Red Dragons, even though they did have some action down the bullpen. But, I mean, the kid has pitched well, and yeah. as you mentioned, his pitch count is low right now. He's been in control here, pitching with a 3-2 to two lead into the bottom of the sixth. The first delivery, this one is tapped foul off the bat of Luke Samuel. Top half of that inning, we had some changes, of course. Nethercourt came from first to the pitcher's mound. Kenyon Collins went to short. That pushed McSweeney from short to second and Folks from second to first for Cabell Midland. And now Comer is ahead of Samuel with strike one. This pitch misses inside. One ball, one strike to count. Only pitch number 64 for Garrett Comer. He has really done a job on the mound today. This one is hit on one bounce past the second baseman into center field. So yet another leadoff base runner for Cavill Midland. The number four hitter, the catcher, Luke Samuel, with a base hit. And here's Isaac Pettit at the plate. Pettit's two for two. And they're going to run for the catcher down at first base. So courtesy runner on at first. And that's Robbie Johnson, a freshman. He takes his lead. The pitch comes in. This one is hit over the head of the shortstop. It's going to fall. Big bounce before Richardson, the center fielder, can get to it and throw it back in. Back-to-back -back singles. Cavill Midland with something cooking in the sixth. And the number six hitter, Jack Eastone, comes to the plate. You want to know, you've heard about yeah, no man's so land. Good. That's where that ball was hit. 11, Just yeah, over the seven. infield. Too short for the outfielders to get to it. Well-placed single that time by Isaac Pettit, the center fielder. Cabell Midland continues to have the bullpen going. They got a relief inning from Nethercut. And now Comer, the St. Albans starter in a jam in the six, swinging a foul off the bat of Eastone. And it's 0 one The next swung on, hit sharply, fair ball down the right field line. That's going to tie the games. The runner around third, he'll score. They wave Pettit around. Here's the throw to the plate. It's not in time. And Cabell Midland on the double off the bat of Jack Eastone. The Knights in front, four to three here in the bottom of the sixth. And still nobody out. Eastone with the line shot into right. It kicked off the wall. The right fielder, Heinemann, picked it up with the bare hand, got it in as quick as he could. But that's three straight hits for Cabell Midland here in the sixth inning. And the Knights have the lead. I don't know about you, Kyle. I don't know what Isaac Pettit runs the 40 in, but he was scooting around those bases from first. We had the courtesy runner score. We had Pettit score. And suddenly this game has flipped. All the momentum in favor of Cabell Midland now. As the Knights are up 4-3 to three in the sixth inning. And they're going to leave Comer in. I mean, he's pitched well up until this point. And the Knights' bats have finally come alive. Suddenly St. Albans. Finds itself down to its final three outs. In the seventh, St. Albans will have hitters 9, 1, and 2 due. Cabell Midland not done in the sixth. Runner at second, nobody out. Ben Folks at the plate. He squares the bunt, pulls it back, and takes a ball. Base hit by Samuel, base hit by Pettit, double to right by Jack Eastone. Squares the bunt again, does bunt it, pops it up, and it reaches the bricks behind home plate. Foul ball. One and one the count. Comer 
Checks the runner, held on by the shortstop Youngblood. Here's another bunt attempt that's foul. First one was popped up. This one bunted over near the bricks as well. Strike two. Nobody out in this inning. Cavill Midland playing for an insurance run. See if they take the bunt off here. One and two the count. Here's the pitch, and it's high and tight. No bunt attempt that time by Folks. Comer again to the plate. Sidearm delivery. Swung on, hit in the air. Shallow left field. Womack coming in. He called off the shortstop. Womack reaches out. That ball drifted a bit on him, but he makes the catch. A fly out to left. Shallow left center field, the first out here in the sixth. The shortstop Youngblood had gone out. And Womack called him off. Thinking maybe I shouldn't have when he had to stab at it just to catch it. But a nice play in the end by Carson Womack. Here's Alfrey. Three-quarters arm delivery inside for ball one. Cavill Midland, two runs here in the sixth. The Knights have taken a 4-3 to three lead. Timeout called. If you're Garrett Comer, you just... You've got to stop that run at second. You cannot allow that to score. You go to bottom, you go to the top of the seventh, trailing by one. Much better than trailing by two or three with those two runners on. This pitch is high. You got the first out. Now you have to think about a strikeout of Alfrey here, who has a hit today. One out of two. Runner breaks for third. Pitch high for a ball. The throw to third, not in time. A running lead for Eastone. Well, that was a Pitcher great came save. Set, got the jump. You're right. That was a scoop right at the bag by Parker. A steal of third base for Eastone. He's there, and now the infield is in, and there's a strike to the plate. St. Albans has to bring the infield in. The next pitch from Comer, a squeeze bunt attempt, and it's foul. That one is fouled into the Cabell Midland dugout. Squeeze play attempt at Eastone was breaking from third. And Alfrey popped the bunt up foul. Now with two strikes, that's off the table. Here's the pitch. And it's high for a ball. Walk putting runners at first and third, one out. Hunter McSweeney comes to the plate. Now seven to plate for the Knights, number five, Hunter McSweeney. McSweeney checks the signs. Long look down at Tracy Brumfield coaching at third. See if Cabell Midland attempts the squeeze attempt or if they put that runner in motion. A big lead. Here's the pitch. It's outside for a ball. No movement that time on the bases. Leadoff hitter Landon Nida on deck. McSweeney at the plate. Eastone at third. Here's the pitch. He swings, hits a line drive. The left fielder is over. He makes the catch. Womack on the run. The runner tags. Eastone will score. There's some insurance for Cabell Midland. Sacrifice fly off the bat of Hunter McSweeney. A line drive run down by the left fielder, Womack. But Eastone scores from third base. Three runs in the inning and a 5-3 to three Cabell Midland lead. Big, big insurance run that time. Great running catch by Womack in left field, but he just could not square up enough to get anything on the throw back into the infield. Runner at first, two outs and a strike to the plate. Landon Nida steps up there. Cavill Midland, again, three runs in the sixth inning. And the count's 0-2 to the hitter, Nida. Again, looking ahead to the seventh. It'll be hitters 9, 1, and 2 for St. Albans. Red Dragons down 
to their final three outs. They've led most of this game. Here's a sidearm for strike three, and the inning is over. But damage done. Three consecutive hits. RBI double by Eastone. Sack fly by McSweeney. Three runs on three base hits. And a runner left. Last chance for St. Albans as Cavill Midland is now in front, 5-3. to three. You're listening to High School Championship Baseball coverage on Metro News, the voice of West Virginia. Here at Thornhill, our goal is to provide you with the best automotive experience. From our state-of-the-art facilities, amenities, and certified staff, we call family. You'll be offered the best experience you deserve. We take pride in our focus for customer care, bringing the best quality and support for all of our customers' needs. What are you waiting for? It's your time to get behind the wheel with Thornhill. Get started now at thornhillautomotive.com. Just tag it at Thornhill, where it's all here for you. US 119 Chapmanville and Logan, WV to Belfry, Kentucky. Well, for a long time, the St. Albans Red Dragons had made those two runs stand up. They added a run in the top of the fifth. It was 3-2, but we went to the sixth, the bottom of the sixth, and three big runs crossed the plate for the Knights of Cabell Midland. And right now, Nethercutt wants to get one, two, three, and move on to tomorrow's championship game. For the Red Dragons... We'll see what they have to say about it. Will Curry will lead it off. Again, 9 1 and 2 scheduled to come to the plate for St. Albans. And the Red Dragons find themselves trailing 5 to 3. And here we go. First pitch, top of the seventh, swinging and popping it up foul. That's Curry. Strike one. Another cut on the mound. His second inning of work came in in the sixth, gave up a leadoff hit. Got a strikeout. He ended up picking that runner off, and then a line drive to the shortstop for the final out. Here's ball one to Curry. Cabell Midland five, St. Albans three. St. Albans led two to nothing. Cabell Midland got a run in the first, two to one. It was tied at two with a run in the third by Cabell Midland. St. Albans retook the lead in the fifth, but a big sixth inning by the Knights has Cabell Midland in front. Here's the pitch to the plate, and it's down low. Curry trying to get on. St. Albans needs at least one base runner to have a chance. Down five to three here in the top of the seventh inning. The right-hander brings it in. And it's a line shot, one hop, diving stop by Collins and Shorty gets up, throws, and there's the first out. Spectacular play on a hard hit ball up the middle. Kenyon Collins makes the defensive play of the game, left his feet, clubbed it, and fired on to first for the first out of the seventh. One away as St. Albans has the top of the order. Hayden Youngblood to the plate. That was a sharp hit ball by Will Curry, but just a great play by Collins. Collins to his left. Got to it. Got the glove on it. Got to his feet and threw him out. Here's the pitch. Outside for ball one. Youngblood has hit the ball hard today. That shot the left. He ended up in third. That's how the game started. This one's popped up right side out of play. Comer is on deck. He's got two hits today. But again, St. Albans needs a base runner to have a chance down 5-3. Here's the pitch. Curveball way high. Now the top four hitters for St. Albans in this game, one hit between the top four.
The outfield straight away. Two and one the count. This pitch swung on and missed. Another cut in line to get the win after his team rallied in the sixth. The starter was Kenyon Collins. He went five innings. This pitch swung on, popped up into right field. High fly ball. Eastone comes on, makes the catch. Two away. Gavel Midland one out away. Is there a baseball player in the world that doesn't like that high <laughs> fastball? Well, usually you can tag it. But you're right. That's an enticing pitch. Cabell Midland in a seventh trip to the state tournament. Looking to get to the finals for the fourth time in school history. Here's the pitch to Comer way high off the glove of the catcher. Samuel to the backstop, and that's ball one. Again, St. Albans needs to get a base runner on. And Comer has been on base twice. You've got your power guy, Riker Parker, on deck. Here's a 1-0 pitch. And it's low and outside, two balls and no strikes. Right now, Garrett Comer just has to be patient and make Nethercut bring the ball to him. Don't go reaching. This one swung on and missed, challenged him with the fastball. Threw it right by him, too. Two and one the count. Great location, and Comer just could not catch up with it. Another cut, trying to get the final out. Here's the pitch. Swung on, fouled out of play over top of us. Two and two the count. Cavill Midland, one strike away. What a road in the postseason it's been for Cavill Midland to earn the number one seed here at State. Huntington beat Cabell Midland 6-4. Game one of the sectionals. As this pitch is coming, it's high for a ball. Cabell Midland beat Lincoln County, beat Huntington to eliminate Huntington. Then they beat Spring Valley twice, including an epic 13-inning game. Here's the pitch. Swung on, fouled out of play again. The count remains three and two. Cabell Midland beat Hurricane. Jumped out to an eight to two lead in game one. Won that game nine to five. And then a three three game in the sixth. In the deciding game, Cabell Midland would win 11 6. Here's a ground ball off the pitcher. Off the foot of Comer, or off the foot of another court. And Comer's going to reach, line shot off the foot or the ankle of Nethercutt. He lost his glove in the process. The ball deflected third base side where it was picked up barehanded by Williams, but no chance to get that runner. So there's your base runner for St. Albans. They've got life here. And, of course, the concern now is with Nethercutt as that sharply hit ball hit off his ankle or off his foot. We do have a timeout on the field. Trainer came out. Are you okay? What do you think the answer is? I'm fine. There you go. The adrenaline's flowing. It's the state semifinals. I'm one out away. Get out of here. That's exactly right. He's going to get some warm-up tosses. And again, he'll focus on Riker Parker. And he looks okay. Well, you know, he's not had a great day at the plate talking about Riker Parker. But if there's one kid in this lineup, that Coach Rick Whitman would want up in this situation. It's Riker Parker. Another cut. Gets a couple of warm-up tosses. He's convinced everybody he's okay. So it will be another cut against Riker Parker. Parker will try and extend the game. Another cut will try and end it. Five to three. Cabell Midland leading St. Albans. Runner at first. Two outs in the seventh inning. Here's the pitch. Swing and a drive into left. Nida is there. He dives. He makes the catch. The third base umpire goes out. Michael Stevens rules it was a catch. So the game ends on that diving grab by Nida in left field. He robs Riker Parker of a base hit. And it puts Cabell Midland in the state championship game. We get a look at the replay on the video. 
Pretty close call, but a great effort, great dive by Nida. The ball's in his glove, and the game is over. 5-3, Cabell Midland defeats St. Albans, and we'll head to the field when we return after this. You're listening to High School Baseball on Metro News, the voice of West Virginia. Farmers and Mechanics Insurance knows West Virginia, and we understand how much all of our high school teams and athletes mean to the communities that we have served for more than 100 years. That's why we're proud of our partnership with the West Virginia SSAC. Their commitment to teach and promote sportsmanship and citizenship is the key to future success. Protecting what matters most to you. Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Companies, a proud partner of the West Virginia SSAC. No matter what it is you need, you'll find it at your local Parmar store. From gas to grocery, snacks, and everything else you always seem to run out of, Parmar Stores has it. Need more savings? Download the Parmar app and sign up for the Parmar Rewards Card. You won't only see our stores in your neighborhoods, you'll see us in your neighborhoods too. We are proud to be in your town and proud to be a part of the community. Come see us at Parmar Stores, and remember, if there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Great game, great ending to a tremendous contest. The diving catch in left field by Nida secures the victory. 5-3, Cabell Midland advances past St. Albans. Let's go down on the field to Chris. All right, thanks a lot, Kyle. Coach, I'll tell you what, uh, your guys just hung in there and kept hacking away. There was no panic, even though you were down to basically three outs and you started making it happen. Yeah, we uh, we were down 2 nothing early in the game, and then uh, we came back and picked back in the game. Uh, stayed two off for a while, and then they went up 3-2. Our, our kids didn't quit. We didn't panic. We told them, let's go. Let's go into this inning right here. And they came out, and Jack Eastone comes up with a big hit down the a double down the right field line. You actually had three hits in a row there that, that I think rocked their pitcher just a little bit. Yeah, it did. I, uh, you know, and our kids have not quit all year long. And with the, uh, like I said, the, I said earlier, uh, the schedule that we've played and all that, we've been behind before, and our kids didn't panic, and they, and they pulled it out. Talk about Eastone's play. You mentioned the fact that he got the big hit that gave you the lead, but he made some key catches out there in right field. Oh, he made a couple of great catches out there in the right field, and uh, I tip my hat to him, you know, it's coming up that big hit, and we had those three hits in that one inning. But, uh, you know, um, I can't say enough about the kid. You came through one of the roughest regionals in the state to get here, so you had to feel like that you've been here before. Oh, with the schedule we played, you know, we had St. Albans twice this year as our third time. You know, Huntington High four or five times, Spring Valley four or five, Hurricane four. And, you know, we played Bridgeport, Ripley, and so our schedule's not easy. Yeah. Well, it doesn't get any easier because you're here for the championship game on Saturday. you got to bring it. Yeah, we have to bring it, make sure we can uh, play our A game. All right, good luck, Coach. Right, well, thank you very much. All right, there he is. Cabell Midland heading to his championship Saturday, guys. All right, Chris there with uh, victorious head coach Tracy Brumfield and uh, great comeback, three runs in the sixth inning. And it's capped by that great diving catch in left field by Nida. And we would be remiss if we didn't mention Nida again because I thought he just played a tremendous left field. Landon Nida, and again, I agree, Jack Eastone played a great right field. But, boy, I'm telling you, Nida was on his game defensively out in left field. Cabell Midland in the finals. And they'll play the winner of University and Hedgesville. And for those along the network line, that game will start at 12.35, so we will be on the air coming up at 12.20. We'll return to the airwaves at 12.20 at WVMetroNews.com and on the Metro News Radio Network for University and Hedgesville Triple-A semifinal round game number two. Final score here once again, it's Cabell Midland 5 and St. Albans 3. We will return. We'll listen back to some of the highlights coming up after this local break on Metro News, the voice of West Virginia.
An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Little General Stores has been serving West Virginia communities for almost five decades. That's nearly 50 years of providing those essential needs for your daily journey. We are so grateful to be a small part of your lives, and we want to recognize the integral part of our operation, the LG family. We know these last couple years haven't been easy, but with every sunrise and sunset, you keep us going. To the LG family, the moms, dads, sisters, brothers, sons, and daughters of West Virginia, thank you. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Here at Thornhill, our goal is to provide you with the best automotive experience. From our state-of-the-art facilities, amenities, and certified staff, we call family. You'll be offered the best experience you deserve. We take pride in our focus for customer care, bringing the best quality and support for all of our customers' needs. What are you waiting for? It's your time to get behind the wheel with Thornhill. Get started now at thornhillautomotive.com. Just tag it at Thornhill, where it's all here for you. US 119 Chapmanville and Logan, WV to Belfry, Kentucky.